After Canada legalized recreational cannabis in 2018, activists and others called on Ottawa to wipe clean the criminal records of those who were convicted for simple possession. And that is the, exactly the direction we are heading come November of this year. It's estimated that upwards of 10,000 Canadians could have their records wiped clean as a result of the change. I'm now joined by Samuel Forrester, reporter with Canadian Affairs, to discuss the upcoming deadline. Sam, thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's good to be on. Now, after legalization, there was an opt-in program where people could apply to have their convictions cleaned. Was this program successful? I think even the most charitable observers would only be able to say that the opt-in record suspension program has had mixed results. While it did provide a pathway for some people to clear their records, the program has been roundly criticized for its complexity and limited reach. Uh, so when the federal government introduced this process with Bill C-93 in 2019, they estimated that 10,000 Canadians or more would be eligible. But as of this year, fewer than 10, uh, sorry, 1,000 people have successfully obtained suspension suspensions. I believe the number is around 850. Now, while it's true that C-93 waived the application fee, critics have suggested that the documentation required for a record suspension request can be difficult to obtain. Currently, applicants must clearly demonstrate to the Parole Board of Canada that they were convicted of simple possession of cannabis by obtaining documentation from the court that heard their case, and sometimes even from the police service that has jurisdiction where they were arrested. So this underwhelming participation signals that while the program is aligned with the Liberals' commitment to reversing the effects of cannabis criminalization, it has fallen short of providing widespread relief. And why is the onus now on Ottawa to make the change rather than continuing with the opt-in program? Well, I do think that the shift from an opt-in program to a government-mandated approach is rooted in the program's limited success. Uh, the current process places the burden on individuals to navigate an application system that has proven to be a significant barrier to some considerable swath of the public. By automating the sequestration of records, Ottawa is acknowledging the need for a smoother, less bureaucratic process. And moreover, I think the policy change also reflects pressure on the government to address what many progressives perceive to be the historical injustices associated with cannabis prohibition, ensuring that those people who have been impacted by past policies are given relief with as little friction as possible. And for those who have simple cannabis possession convictions, how exactly does this change their lives? Well, having records suspended or automatically sequestered, as will be the case in November, can be a big deal. Uh, a criminal record can be a significant barrier to employment, housing, international travel, and a range of other forms of civic engagement that might not be quite as intuitive. In speaking with the NDP's justice critic, Randall Garrison, I heard that one of the most common issues he sees in his constituency is parents not being able to coach or volunteer because of the complications that arise from a criminal history vetting process. So isolating drug possession records within police databases alleviates some of the stigma and legal restrictions that follow a person after their sentence has been served. And it also allows people to move forward without the shadow of a conviction affecting their daily lives, opening up doors to opportunities that wouldn't uh, otherwise be there. And in your reporting, was there any pushback to removing these convictions from police databases? Surprisingly little. Uh, given how much criticism has been directed at some of the Liberal government's other drug policies, I was expecting there to be more public dissent and in particular, more vocal opposition from conservatives. One of the potential criticisms I do note in the article is that plea bargaining uh, is commonplace in Canada's criminal courts, and that may unintentionally conceal the history of someone whose actions fall outside the scope of the legislation. For example, sometimes at the discretion of a prosecutor, an individual charged with a more serious crime like trafficking or possession for the purpose of trafficking, 
uh, may end up actually pleading that charge down to simple possession, which could then be eligible for automatic sequestration. But I will clarify though, because I think it's an important point that both the previous record suspension mechanism and the automatic sequestration uh, mechanism that's currently being implemented don't actually remove the convictions from police databases, but rather separate them internally so that they don't appear on civilian background checks. 